I'm here in Evansville. Uh, it's been a little while for myself. I want to say it's been over a couple of months now. Uh, we're going to get right into the lesson. Started a little late, so and this is not a long lesson at all. Uh, straight to the point. The title of the lesson is The Spiritual Awareness of the One Who is Known as Satan, the Devil. Uh, uh, he has many names as well. We will touch on some of those names. Uh, the spiritual awareness of Satan, the enemy of man. Because, well, first off, I'd like to say, uh, in order to understand spiritual things, you have to be able to understand, you know, natural things, as the, as the Lord has, has told us. But you, but most importantly, you must have what the Bible calls spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. All right, that works both ways, and meaning you 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 must be able to spiritually discern, you know, the Word of God, right. as well as be able to spiritually discern the works of Satan. Right. Because see, a lot of people, you know, put it like this: you have. Do you know that there are many people who don't even believe that the devil exists? You know. They absolutely just don't believe that the devil exists. Then you have those that don't believe God exists. Okay, but uh, we're touching on this because there there are key things to understand about being a, being spiritually aware to who is known as Satan. Okay, uh, the enemy of man because that is what Satan is. He's nobody's enemy but man's. That's it. Another fact, Satan. There's not, there's no battle between God and Satan in this world. Another uh, uh, misconception. They don't, God and the devil don't battle, all right? God runs it all. The devil is allowed to do what he's allowed to do and only what he's allowed to do. Amen. All right? So that's another fact, and we'll tell you, we'll, we'll be able to prove all of this. The devil has no power more than what God has given him, all right? However, he is way, 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 way way, 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 way more powerful than man. All right, because Satan is a spirit. All right, Satan was uh, God's most beautiful angel. Actually, his name is also known as Lucifer. All right, the angel, you know, uh, he was a very, um, he was supposed to be the angel uh, that would bring light unto men. And he, uh, as, as, as we will read, um, he, he wanted basically what God had. He did not want to be a servant. He wanted to be God. All right? And that is where, that is where he went. That is where he failed miserably. The spiritual awareness of Satan, the enemy of man. Uh, we're going to start this lesson out in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians 6. Because we, you know, if you all are like myself, I'm into documentaries. I love documentaries of all sorts. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there are many wicked men in the flesh on this planet, as we know. All right? And the book talks about, you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. And we're going to deal a little bit with that as well. Spiritual wickedness and high places. All right. There are people, that's like we say, who don't even believe the devil exists. There are those who actually serve the devil. They actually, they not only they believe in him, they serve him and worship him. Okay. So the devil is real, in other words. And that's, that, that is why this lesson is so important because we, you need to be spiritually aware of how real the devil is, in other words. All right? Picking it up in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we are going to uh, pick it up at verse 12. When, uh, well, no, we're going to pick it up. Uh, let's pick it up at verse 12. No, verse 11, when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Put on the whole arm of God. Uh-huh. That you may be able to stand against the violence of the devil. I mean, that right there 
and straight to the point. But it, 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 it's as simple as it sounds, put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil is not as simple as it sounds. All right? Putting on the whole armor of God is not simple. You know, that's a process. But it requires that you have the whole armor on in order to fight against this spirit called Satan. First of all, you will not win. You will not be able not, it's not even a, it's not even about winning. You will not be able to just stand against it. Because you're not, you can't beat the devil. Okay? You can't beat him. You are flesh, the devil is a spirit. And he is more powerful than man. However, you can put on the whole armor of God and stand against the wiles of the devil, and the devil will flee from you. The devil will not waste any time <clears throat> on one who has put on the whole armor of God. And we're going to talk about this whole armor of God. Keep reading, brother, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's right. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. So you see what he said? Because we, well, we wrestle not against just flesh and blood, you know, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to go back to something. This spirit, you know, the, the rulers of the darkness, of darkness of this world, this is talking about these men that 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 actually rule the world, but they're very dark men, very dark men, and their wickedness, their spiritual wickedness, lies in high places. All right, and we're going to talk a little more about that. Who are these rulers of darkness of this world? You know, these are men, flesh and blood men, who are operating by the devil, none other than the devil. Actually, they worship the devil. Okay? But he says in order, okay, but, but, but the scripture here is saying, put on the whole armor so that you can stand against, so that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because, you know, these rulers of darkness in this world, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, these, against these powers and this spiritual wickedness in high places, it is going to require that you are able to spiritually discern the works of the devil you will have to be able to spiritually discern that. Keep reading, brother. 14. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, no, 13. 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You hear that? See, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Again, he's telling you, you got to have this whole armor, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So, not only to stand against the wiles of the devil, but also to be able to withstand in the evil day. And the evil day that, that, that this is talking about is that, is that great day. That great day, that great day of wrath that is coming, that the, book has, that, that, that the book has spoken about all throughout the book. That evil day. you got to be able to stand against that evil day because when that evil day comes, you don't have on the whole arm of God, you are going to be consumed. Absolutely. But we're gonna get more into that. Keep reading. More into that. Uh-huh. Stand therefore, and the loins girt about the truth. That's right. First of all, stand therefore. This is your whole armor. You know, we're not talking about that physical armor that knights wore back in the medieval times to, you know, fight against their battle of their enemies. We're talking about that armor that is all spiritual. It says, first, stand there having your loins girded with truth number one and what is that truth we'll find out keep reading and having the breastplate of righteousness and the bless the breastplate of righteousness the breastplate of righteousness you have to walk in righteousness according to god that's right you are not going to win against the the wise you're not going to be able to stand against the wise of the devil the devil's too he's too he's too crafty for you to think that you can do it without putting on this armor. And we're going to go into some things. Because if the devil tried to tempt Jesus, mm -hmm. oh my God, what do you think you can do for, to man? And what he does to man for that matter. Breastplate of righteousness. And what else, brother? And your feet shod with the prayer. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's right. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of life. 
of, of, of peace because the gospel of the good news of the coming of the kingdom and the good news of the coming of, of, of peace because there is no true peace and there will be no true peace until the prince of peace returns. But the gospel that we preach is one of peace because ultimately that is the good news, the coming of the kingdom and that peace will come with that kingdom. All right, but you have to, and your feet have to be shod with the preparation. You know what I'm saying? Because the preparation of the gospel of peace. Keep reading. Uh huh. Above all, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. See, 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 see. And, and faith, I'm gonna tell you something about faith. Faith. You know, a lot of people think they understand what faith is, and they have absolutely no clue about what faith is. Faith is not. Uh, simply a belief. Okay? Faith is a walk. You know, you know the book says, we, you know, we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is a walk. It is not just a belief. But that's the that's the one of the misconceptions. That's one of the, 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 the one of the things that even the devil wants you to believe. That is just a belief. But you can have faith in anything for that matter. If it's just a belief. But it is a walk, and it says that you have to uh, 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 take the, the shield of faith so that you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Everything that's coming at you, that faith is what is going to help you endure. It is faith that, 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 that made Abraham walk and take his son Isaac off to slay him by commandment of God, his own son. That was faith. Because he was actually going to do it. Okay? It is faith that, you know, we can go on right. about faith. Right. And we will go on about it. But understand that faith is not a belief, it is a walk. Alright? And you have to walk it. Alright? But the shield of faith is what's going to protect you against all the fiery darts of the wicked that comes at you. Right. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. And this is the word of God. This is the sword of the spirit. The very book that we are reading from. You have. This is your whole arm. This is your whole arm. All right. It, you know. If you got all that. You will be just fine. According to the scriptures. Alright? You will be just fine. But you have to have all of these. All of these are required. Alright. We're gonna we start it there. Get you a get you in, get you grounded some here into what we're getting ready to get into. Revelations, the twelfth chapter. Revelations, the twelfth chapter. Because again. As he said, that you have to put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because we do the, the the what we battle against is not just against flesh and blood. May think we are, but it's, 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 it's deeper than that. Revelations 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Revelations 12 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead and read. And there was war in heaven. And there was a war in heaven. And this war took place in heaven way before <coughs> man existed. All right? Keep reading. Michael and his angels. Michael and his angels. Fought against the dragon. Fought against who? The dragon. The dragon. Uh huh. And the dragon fought with his angels. And the dragon fought with his angels. Now, who is this dragon? Because again, Satan is known by many, 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 many names. He's the dragon. He's the serpent. <clears throat> Beelzebub. Go on. You know, Shaitan, whatever. He's been known by, he is known by many names. But right now, the book is referring to him as the dragon. And it says that Michael and his angels fought against basically Satan and his angels. See, when this war took place, it was it was the righteous angels and the wicked angels. And when Satan 
uh, when Satan decided that he was going to, he wanted to take over God's spot, his place, and not be a servant, he convinced a third of the angels to join him. He convinced the third angel. It's a pretty powerful spirit that you were able to convince other angels and they joined you. You know, Satan is real and he is powerful. But as we just read, he's not of a he, he's not of a, of a word. If you are, you know, if you have done that whole armor of God. And that's why this is so important. And that is why spiritually being able to discern the wiles of the devil is also very important as well. Keep reading. Hey. Uh -huh. And prevail not. And prevail not. So they fought against Michael. The devil and his angels fought against Michael and his angels, and they prevailed not. Go ahead. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. What did it say? Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. You have had people tell you that Satan is still in heaven. There, there's doctrine out there on that stuff. False doctrine out there. Satan is not in heaven. Satan is right here on this earth, right now. He is the prince of this world, as the book said. Now he has a time, and his time will end. But right now, he is not with the with the Father, as some have taught. He is his place was found no more, and that's all the book says about it. Right? Don't say no more. It doesn't require a rocket scientist. His place was found no more in heaven. So if he's not in heaven, where is he? Right here. Keep reading. Now. Nah. Uh-huh. And the great dragon was cast out. He was cast out, that great dragon. That old serpent. That old serpent called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan uh -huh. defeated the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out. With him. You hear that? He said, which deceived the whole world. And that is what Satan has done. That is why he is the enemy. Because he has deceived the whole world. And who did he do it through? He did it through Adam. He did it through Adam. That's how it was. Because trust me, once that deception took place, it affected mankind ever since. But he says that this great dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, was cast out and his minions were cast out with in chains of darkness. All right? These are angels, because there was a war in heaven. All right, let's keep moving. Let's go now over to Genesis, the third chapter. We just read that old serpent, right? Genesis, the third chapter. Very important that we understand this particular spirit. Because you have to be able to spiritually discern the wiles of the devil. And a lot of people can't. But they can't even spiritually discern, discern God's word. So, they, you know, you can't expect them to be able to spiritually discern the works of Satan. And we'll find, we'll, 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 we're going to find out why later. Chapter 3 of Genesis, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get that, go ahead and read it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, Yeah. That God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, the book says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field, which the Lord God had made. And people actually think that this is a serpent. All right? They, they said, oh, he came in the form of a serpent. And he turned, and that is the perception. And you can see why it may possibly be. But it's not the truth, because we just read about that old dragon, that old serpent, that great dragon, we just read it in Revelation, called the devil. The devil is not a snake. The devil is not a snake. Excuse me. Uh, you mean mm -hmm. Yes. The devil is not a snake. It's okay. The devil is a spirit, a real spirit. All right? But it says this serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. All right? And. And the woman said unto the son, We may eat of the fruit. No, I'm sorry. Did, uh, uh, did you finish up verse one? I finished one. You finished one? He said, Yeah. Have God said, No, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field which God had made. And he said unto the woman, 
Yeah, God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, huh? He said, he's questioning her. Right? Yes. Right. Uh, he's questioning her. This is this, 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 this uh, serpent here. Right. He said, he, he asked the woman, yeah, because God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, huh? Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, you may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said that. You should not eat of it, you should be touched it, lest you die. Okay, and now, go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, You should not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That you should not, now you hear that. Now, now uh, again, it says that when he asked them that, that the Lord basically told you that you shouldn't eat of, eat of, uh, eat of every tree, huh? Now, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is what Satan is seeing. He says that God said you shall not eat of every tree. This is, these are not real trees. This is not a real tree we're talking about here. This is what I'm talking about, about spiritually discerned. Right. All right. This is not a real tree. It wasn't a bunch of trees out there and one tree that you go and grab a fruit off of when you bite into it, now your eyes will be open knowing good and evil. No. No. That is, that is a lie. And we're going to show you why it's a lie. Because you cannot eat anything and become enlightened. There's no such science that 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 proves that eating any type of food will make you more, will enlighten you. Number one. Let's be realistic. So these are not trees. When he told what he told her is that you are able to to uh, eat of every other tree except the one that stands here. And that's all God told. Him. Basically, do not deal with this spirit. Do not deal with this particular spirit. Do not listen to him. Do not communicate with him. Do not talk to him. Don't eat of him at all. Because see, the book, the Bible, is, when most times when the Bible is talking about eating in a spiritual sense, it is actually talking about not physical eating, but spiritually eating and consuming his word. All right? That's what it's talking about. It is not talking about food. You know, sometimes we have to understand how the word uses, uh, yeah, uses how and, and, and how it compares natural things to spiritual things. In other words, that's what the Bible does. That's why Jesus said, if you can't understand natural things, how can you understand about spiritual things? Most people don't even understand natural things. Right. You know, but again, this is not a trick. So basically, the devil came and said, so 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 God told you you can't. You know, deal with you can't eat of every eat of every tree in the garden, huh? Meaning God said you can't talk to me, huh? You shouldn't deal with me, huh? Is that why that's what he told you? Well, let me tell you why he told you that. This is why he told you that. Alright, but we're gonna find out that the devil told a half truth. Alright? Deception one hundred percent. I don't care if it's a half truth or whatever. It is deception. That is all it is. That's why the book says he deceived the whole world. Keep reading. He See, says that your eyes will be open, right? And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And so they consumed the words of this particular spirit, known as the serpent, or that great dragon, or the devil. Uh, keep reading. Six. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. See, when the woman saw the tree was good for food, she wasn't eating that. Oh, this is good. Mm. No. When she what when the words that were coming that were that she was consuming in her ears, they sounded good to her. It tempted her. You know, it's just like if somebody comes to you and say, hey, you know what? Somebody, you know, you, you know, your parent told you, no, I don't want you going over here across the street because it's dangerous across the street. All right? Do not go over there at all. And then the child has a friend that comes and says, you know what? The reason why your mom don't want you to go over there is because there's, there's a whole bunch of money in there. Right. You know? Right. And if you go over there, you'll get all that money. Right. And you can take all that money and you can do whatever you want with it. Same concept. You know, and that begins to start to sound good to the kid. Oh man, you know, this sounds like it's good. 
to God. Maybe I should listen to my friend. Go ahead, read. And then it was pleasant to the eyes. And it was pleasant to the eyes. And and how was it pleasant to the eyes? Because the devil was a spirit, period. Uh, 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 and, and indeed, from according to the Bible, was a beautiful spirit, beautiful angel, according to the Bible. You know. So not only was this spirit talking good to her, the spirit actually looked good and was pleasant to her eyes. Go ahead and read. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And a tree to be desired and a spirit to be <coughs> soul to make it, uh, to make thee wise. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. She did eat of it. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did So what she did, he went back to her husband and, and told her husband about all that this spirit had told her. And so did Adam eat as well. When he was was supposed to you know, forbid her as God had commanded That's right. both of them. That's right. That's he went ahead and ate and consumed it as well. He fell into that temptation as well. All right? Keep reading. Verse 7. Uh -huh. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh -huh. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So now the eyes were open. See, what fruit makes your what food makes you opens your eyes and gives you knowledge? No food. There's no food that does that. So what the devil did was told them they didn't even know that they were naked. They had no concept of what naked was, because that was not considered naked. That was God's creation. That was how he created man. Just like he created an animal. You don't say an animal was naked, do you? Animals don't wear clothes. You don't say that an animal was naked. So man was not naked until his eyes were open and then now he felt naked. Man said he was naked. God didn't say he was naked. So what did they do? Now their eyes open. The devil told them, hey, look, you know, you're naked. And what did they do when it sold together and put on and sold together clothes and put them on? Go ahead and read. Now, and the Lord God, <coughs> excuse me, and the Lord God called him down and said unto him, Uh huh. Where art thou? Where art thou? Uh huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Uh huh. Keep reading. And he said, Who told you that I was naked? That's what God told me. Who told you you were naked? I never told you you were naked. Who told you you were naked? Right. You know, go ahead. Is thou eating of the tree? Well, I commanded thee, thou shouldest not eat. Have you been talking to that spirit that I told you not to deal with right. at all? Have you been consuming the words of this spirit that I told you to stay away from? I told you you can eat of all these other trees, but I told you to stay away from this. Have you been dealing with this? Keep reading. For real. Uh -huh. And the man said, The woman whom thou gave us to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. You hear that? That was the weakest excuse that he could have given. That this woman brought it to him and made him eat it, basically. The weakest excuse. He was supposed to stand up in that now. Right. Okay? But again, the devil told him to have truth. The devil said, Your eyes will be open. And truly, their eyes were open. But the devil told him a lie also. Thou shalt not run. Surely thou art right. That's what the devil told him. And man has been dying ever since. Keep reading. Verse 13. Verse 13. Uh -huh. And the Lord God said unto the woman, mm -hmm. What is this that thou hast done? Uh -huh. And the woman said, mm -hmm. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. You hear that? The Lord, she, she said, and the Lord said, well, you know, woman, what have you done? And she said, well, the serpent, the serpent did deceive me, and I did listen to him, and I did consume him, and I basically I did come back and give it to my husband. Let's keep moving. Let's go over to Jude. Jude, the, the ninth. Well, Jude, the ninth verse. Jude is just one book. Jude, is one book before Revelation. Jude. And we're going 
Wurzel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I say June 9? June 9. I'm sorry. Now let's go over to Ezekiel the 28th chapter. Let's go over to Ezekiel first. Ezekiel the 28th chapter, and we'll pick it up at verse 5. <coughs> Because even Ezekiel speaks of who Satan is, who Satan really is. Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. 11. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, that's right. take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect beauty. You hear that? So he says, More of the word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. We got to find out who this king of Tyrus is. And say, because this king of Tyrus is not a man. But we are going to find that out. It says, And say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. What is he saying about this king of Tyrus? that sells up the sun, uh -huh. and is what? With full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That's why the spirit was pleasant to Eve's eyes, all right? The devil can always appear to be pleasant to the eyes, okay? All right, one spiritual aspect to keep in mind when you are spiritually discerning Satan and the works of Satan. It says, Thou sellest up the sun. He's talking, he says, Go tell us to the king of Titus. This is what uh, uh, the Lord told Ezekiel to go do. He said, Thus said the Lord, Thou sellest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect beauty. The, the Satan, what? Satan was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Keep reading. Entertain. Uh huh. Thou was bent in the Eden, the garden of God. You hear that? Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. That is where Adam and Eve were placed when they were created, in the garden of Eden. He's not talking about a, 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 a flesh and blood king here, but he's referring to him as the king of Titus. All right? And saying, he says, you know, thou hast set us up the psalm, you're full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He said, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. All right? And that was who was talking to Eve. And Eve did not eat a fruit from a tree. Eve consumed the words of a spirit and took it back to her husband. She was deceived. But the Lord is telling you clear that this king of Tyrus, he went, they didn't say anything about king of Tyrus in the movie what we just read in Genesis. Right, right, right. It said that serpent, right? So remember, he has different names, and we're going to figure out all of them. Before it's over. It says, Thou hast been in the Eden, in Eden, the garden of God. Go ahead. Every precious stone was thy covenant. Uh huh. The sardines, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the iron, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the cumbon, the angel, the workmanship, and thy tablet, and thy pipes, was prepared in thee, and the day that thou was created. You hear that? Because he was a beautiful angel. When Beth Eden was created, he was, uh, according to the book, he was a beautiful angel. Beautiful angel. He was a musician. Um, some of this the uh, physical aspects of, of, of him. This this you know, and this is what this is what he's talking about right here in the scripture. You know, thou has been in the Eden, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, all you know, just everything. He had it all. He says, uh, you know, since you were created, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. Did you hear what, the, what he called him? Thou art the anointed cherub, the anointed angel. Because Satan was an anointed angel. Uh-huh. That what? The cover. That cover. Mm-hmm. And I have set thee so. And I have set thee so, the as the Lord said. See, again, this is why I say the devil has no control, because the devil was created by God. Created by God. He said, I have set thee so. All right? But he said, but well, we think he's talking about this king of Tyrus. No, we're going to find out he's not talking about a flesh and blood king keep, uh, 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 or a man when he's referring to 
Satan as his king of Tyre. <coughs> Keep reading. That was, a, excuse me. that was what? That was upon the holy mountain of God. That was upon the holy mountain of God. How was he upon the holy mountain of God? Because he was up in heaven with God until he went against God and was cast out of heaven, as we just read. Never to be there again. His place is not found there anymore. Has not been found anymore. Will not be found anymore. But he says, you are in the mountain of God, right? Keep reading. Thou was walk up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. That's right. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until what? Iniquity was found. Until iniquity was found in me. And that iniquity that was found in me was that, that, that Satan did not want to be just what he was already, just a brilliant angel. Uh, he, that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. In other words, this spirit got beside himself and had to be cast down. But he says, until iniquity was found in me, you were perfect in all your ways. This is not a man. Keep talking, keep reading. See, see. Uh -huh. By the multitude of thy merchandise, the appeal of Mr. Thee Revive. That's right. And thou hast sinned. And thou hast sinned. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. He said, You hear that? We just read where he cast him out of heaven. Well, this mountain of God is representing heaven. That's the mountain of God. And you have been profane, so you were cast out of this mountain, or basically cast out of heaven, as we just read earlier. All we're doing is confirming who this is. That's right. Go ahead. And I will destroy thee. And I will destroy thee. O covering chair. Uh huh. From the midst of the stones of fire. From the midst of the stones of fire. So basically, he will get destroyed eventually. The devil still exists. So for people who don't believe he's real, you are sadly mistaken. Because the devil does exist. And the Lord is going to destroy the devil. But at a point in time. We can read all of that. Keep, uh, keep reading. First of all. Uh huh. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. See, see, because he was so, he was so beautiful, because he was so powerful and 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 so great as an angel, he got big at it. In other words, got beside himself, became prideful and arrogant. Keep reading. Thou was corrupted thy wisdom, my reason of thy brightness. See, you have corrupted your own wisdom. Because remember, we just read that. Thou hast sealed up the sun, right? Full of wisdom, perfect in all beauty. Then he's telling you here that you have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. By reason you have corrupted your wisdom, wisdom because you were full of, full of wisdom. In other words, sometimes you know what I'm saying. You you know uh, 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 the saying too smart for your own good. That's what we're talking about here. Keep reading. I will cast thee down, to, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You hear that? He says that I will cast thee to the ground. I'm going to cast you to the earth. You will not be found in heaven no more, no doubt about that. And I will lay thee before kings on that earth that they may behold thee. And that is exactly what happened. See, and you know what? These kings that that the labor for kings, these, you know, remember we just read about the spiritual wickedness in high places? Rulers of the darkness of this world. These are talking about flesh and blood beings. Well, these kings, they are also flesh and blood, and they, and they, they said that they may behold thee. These men, these men behold Satan. That's why I said they're men that worship Satan. Powerful men that worship Satan. Completely and wholeheartedly. They behold him. That's why we know there's truth to what we just read about that spiritual wickedness in high places. Because this, these are, this is, yeah, these are flesh and blood men, but the power that they have, the principalities, is it's from high places. That's right. Keep reading. That's right. Uh huh. And they, <clears throat> and I tell you, uh huh. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shall thou be anymore. And never shall thou be anymore. We are talking about Satan. That's right. That's right. You know. This is none other. This king is none other than Satan. Let's go now over to uh, Second Thessalonians. We we'll go to Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Yeah. Thessalonians, second. Yeah. 
second class of Now we And uh, we're going to pick it up at, in the second chapter of second Thessalonians. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, go ahead. <clears throat> let no man deceive you by any means. Please let no man deceive you by any means. Uh huh. For that, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh huh. And then man's sin be revealed to some condition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he asks God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is that he is God. So what it is is. You know, uh, you read the beginning of that chapter. Basically, Paul is telling the Thessalonians, you know, that you should not be shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word or letter, because at, at, or as the, as meaning in regards to the day of Christ and when it is at hand. All right. Basically, we know the signs of the Lord's coming. So he's telling them, look, you know, all these things. There's the Lord told you in Matthew the twenty fourth chapter. All there are so many things that have to happen first before. Anything else, you know, certain other things happen that he, you know, you so until these things happen in that order, it, then you might don't be troubled, right. Right. don't let anybody deceive you or fool you yeah. into whatever. Because if this is why I think you have to, when you're able to spiritually discern, you know, God's word, you have, you know, you then you understand the signs that God had that He says that you would have to that has to happen before this happens. His second coming. So here he's talking about none of this stuff will happen for the day, for that day shall not come that the Lord is going to return, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now we do lessons on this man of sin, this son of perdition. That's not what we're focusing on today, but I just want to show you the similarity between this particular man of sin who opposes. And exalt to themselves because this is what has to happen. There has to be a man who's going to stand up before the world and say and oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, is going to sit in a temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This has to happen. And this man is going to claim to be God himself. And anybody in other beliefs and all that, he's not going to have any. Respect for any of that. He's going to oppose it, action and exalt himself. All right? Now, isn't that similar to what Satan did? Opposed God and then exalted himself. All right? So, check it out. You got this man of sin. He did just as Satan tried to do. One, you know, one war was in heaven and the other, this other war going to be on this earth. Though. But we're talking about this man of sin. Did you see the similarity? This man is going to come in and, 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 and folks, who's behind a man like that? Hmm. Surely not God. It's Satan. He's behind that man. He has all the characteristics of his master. And we're going to find that out. But keep reading. Wow. Uh-huh. Remember he not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? See, remember I told you these things? Uh-huh. And now he know what was over that he might be revealed at this time. Uh -huh. for, the mystery, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let us let uh -huh. be taken out of the way. He said, for the mystery of iniquity of sin doth already work. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Right? Keep reading. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that what? That wicked, wicked be revealed. Uh huh. Whom the Lord shall consume. And shall destroy with the violence of his coming. See, how is that how is that wicked gonna be revealed at that point? See, this man of sin is gonna come and he's gonna pose and exalt himself and claim to be God, and then the Lord's gonna destroy him. And then the, the his master, who it says, and then shall the wicked, that wicked, capital W, be revealed. The one who was behind him, in other words. Then he's gonna be the devil, gonna be consumed. With the spirit of his mouth, he says. All right? The devil will be consumed by the word of God. That is why 
At first we read in Ephesians about putting on that whole armor. And the last part of that armor is that word of God. Gotta, gotta, gotta have that word of God. Gotta be able to understand this word so that you can protect yourself against the wiles of the devil. You gotta understand how the devil works, who the devil is. And, and, and so right now we're reading, he says that this man of, of sin that, that, that will, be, that will uh, come forward, he will be destroyed, and then that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and what? And shall destroy with the what? With the brightness. brightness. With the brightness of his coming. Right. See, when he comes, when the Lord comes, he's going to be, he, it will, he, it, basically, when he comes, you will know it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, verse 9, let's go. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and signs and line of wonder. Did you hear that? It says, even him whose coming right. is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and line ones. Because this man is going to come and he is going to have all types of powers and wonders that he will perform that will have people actually believing that he is God. Now there are questions on who this man of sin is. We won't get into that. We have an idea. Because even though we haven't gotten to this point yet, this is all coming. This is all prophecy. Uh, there's a man on this earth, a very powerful religious figure that people actually right now believe is God. Absolutely. You know. So, you know, it won't be too hard to believe that if you have a man at this time who's performing these great wonders and signs, they're going to be sucking right on in. Okay? Uh, verse 9, we finished, right? Let's go over now to, uh, let's go to Ezekiel 28 again. Ezekiel 28. And then we're going to pick it up this time. We're going to pick it up from verse 1 to verse 10. We started last in verse 11 to 19, but this time we're going to go back to 28 and pick it up at verse 1. Indeed, that is who that, that this man is known as the Pope right now. Very powerful religious figure and is believed to be God, even right now, by flesh and blood beings. They really believe that. Ezekiel 28, verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, uh -huh. to the man, say it to the prince of Titus. Say it to the prince of Titus, right? Now, first we read about the king of Titus, right? Now we're reading about the prince of Titus. Because, so this would have to be uh, uh, something like a son uh, to the king, right? So uh, now we're dealing with this priest. So the Lord is telling Ezekiel, now... Uh, Ezekiel, I want you to do what now that thou son of man take up a lamentation for Tyrus, right? Uh, he says, but he, he says, uh, saying to the prince of Tyrus, what does, does, go ahead. Thus said the Lord God, uh -huh. because thine heart is lifted up, uh -huh. and thou said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou, excuse me, yet thou art a man, and not God, uh -huh. though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. See, this is not Satan. This is that man of sin. That's who that is. He's the prince of Tyrus. So you had the king of Tyrus who was clearly des described as Satan, the devil. Now you got this man of sin because he's telling you clearly right here that this uh, man, thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God. Didn't we just read in 2 Thessalonians that this man is going to oppose and exalt himself against all that is called God? And claim that he is God? Well, that's what we read. That is the prince of Tyrus. That is the man of sin who is powered by none other than the king of Tyrus, who is none other than Satan. It says, I am a God. I sit in the seat of this is what God is saying to this, this uh what what uh uh the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel until uh, Ezekiel to say, Son of man said to the prince of Tyrus, thus said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet, or in the midst of the people. Seas represent people. It says, yet thou art a man. 
And that's how we know that that is this man of sin, this son of perdition. That's who we know. This is a flesh and blood being that's going to do this. All right? He said, you are a man and you are not God. But you're going to say you're God? See, the Lord called it all, called the ending from the beginning. We're not, what we're reading here is prophecy. And it lines up so well. You understand what this is saying? He says, thou hast set in thine heart the heart of God. Basically. Keep reading. Verse 3. Uh-huh. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Uh-huh. There's no secret that they can hide from thee. He said, thou art wiser than Daniel. There's no secret that they can hide from thee. Uh-huh. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten the riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasure. That's right. By thy great wisdom and thy, excuse me, by thy great wisdom uh -huh. and thy chopping, hast thou increased thy riches, and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. That's right. And therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast said, set thine heart as the heart of God. You see what I'm saying? This man, who the Lord just said, you are not, you are a man and you are not God. He said, how you, you, you know, uh, because of your, your, your great wisdom, uh, you, you, you have increased your riches. Your heart is lifted up because of thy riches. No doubt about it, this man of sin will be extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. But go ahead and read it. Says, uh -huh. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God. Because thou hast set thy heart as, as, as the heart of God. Uh -huh. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, uh -huh. and terrible of the nations. And they shall draw the swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy righteousness. Uh -huh. They shall bring thee down to the pit. That's right. And thou shalt die the deaths of them, and thou slain in the midst of the sea. You hear that? He said, They shall bring thee down to the pit. He says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and shall defile thy brightness. So again, we can go, this is not, that's another lesson, but again, that we can read it. And we can go back and read who these strangers that are going to come and take this uh, uh, to, to, to try to devour this man who, who's claimed to be God. We can read where, where uh, this man is going to be troubled because he's going to get news that there are people coming to get him. We can read that. He's the, the, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna get news that they're coming from the north, and good news that they're coming from every to, to get him. And this is what he's talking about. The Lord said, "I'm gonna send these, people. I'm gonna send these strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations." He said, "I'm gonna send the worst of the nations against you." And he said, "And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, and they shall defile thy rights." He's talking about what he's going to do to this man of sin. And he said, "Then after that, they shall bring thee down to the pit." And th thou shalt die the deaths of them that are what slain in the midst of the sea, in the midst of the people. He's going to die that death because he is nothing but a man, right? and he is going to die. Go ahead and read words. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Will you say that then? He's talking mm -hmm. about this man of sin. Will you say I am God then when I send these strangers upon him? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But thou shalt be a man and no God. Uh huh. In the hand of him that slayeth thee. That's right. Thou shalt die the death. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. He said, "Thou shalt die the deaths of basically of the ungodly by the hand by the hand of strangers." What? Why well, spoke? Why well, spoken? It said the Lord. Said the Lord God. This has got to happen. We just read this. This do not be deceived. There, there has to be a falling away person. This man of sin has to be revealed. And you there's no need of worrying about nothing. But you know too much. Yeah. But even before that, that's right. That's right. about the Lord's coming, because that has to happen before before the, uh, Jesus comes back. All right, let's go now. I just want to touch down on that because if you go into the eleven to nineteen, then he sends him uh, Ezekiel to go and talk to the king of types and let him. This is what you did. You were beautiful, you know, and you were great. But this is what's going to happen to you as well. Let's go now over into uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. We're going to Isaiah, the 14th. See, we got to understand who this enemy is. You got to understand the enemy. You know, you cannot win the battle not knowing who your enemy is. 
Isaiah 14. And we are going to pick it up at verse 12. Isaiah 14, verse 12. When you get that, go ahead and read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Mm -hmm. Good morning. That's right. How thou uh, go ahead and read that again, brother. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's another one of his names. Right. Uh-huh. How art thou cut down to the ground which did us weaken the nation? They said, How did you how uh, how thou art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? I mean, how did the, the son of the morning? Right. You know? How how art thou cut down to the ground? How were you cast out of heaven? And cut down to that so that you what you did weaken the nations. When once you came on you weakened the nations. Remember? Mm -hmm. Lord said, I'm gonna lay you down there before kings and they'll be holy. And that's what happened. He said, you have come out and you did weaken the nations. Go ahead. For thou was sin in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. See, what? Uh-huh. I, I will exalt my throne above the star of God. Now, isn't that what that man of God, man of sin, is the same thing he's going to do? See, see, that's, he's fueled by his master, Satan. Because right. that's the same thing Satan did. We read this about the same thing. It says, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Uh-huh. And I will, I will sit upon the mountain of the congregation in the size of the north. You hear that? He says, and I, and I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. Basically, he's going to sit in God's throne, in other words. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is what he said in his heart. Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. You shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Go ahead. They that see thee shall narrowly we can find thee and consider thee saying, Is this the man that made the earth the trouble that did shake king? Because that's what's going on. He's talking about Satan right there. Let's go now over to uh, Luke, the eighth chapter. Now that is Satan. We're going to deal with some of his minions. Because remember, a third of them came along with him. You, didn't, you know what I mean? Uh, Luke 8, verse 26. When you get there, brother, what did you read? Uh -huh. And they arrived the country of the Galileans, mm -hmm. and over to the Galilee. That's right. And when, and when he went forth from land, they met him out of the city, a certain man which had devils a long time, and wore no clothes, neither bowed in any house, but in the tombs. Okay. Uh huh. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What am I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. All right, you hear that? So you got this man who, uh, who, um, uh, a certain man, which as the Bible describes, had devils for a long time. He was troubled by demons. And there are a lot of people that are troubled by demons. These are, this is real stuff. These are real things, and they happen for real. Uh, demons are real. You know, that's why I say, you know, uh, you know, people don't really realize that when you're playing around with a certain things that you don't know what can or want you're opening up. Mm -hmm. Because these things are real. Demons are real. And if they get inside of you, you it is not an easy thing to shame at all. You are tormented for a day, for years and years behind. It. And there are many people that are filled with fear. But then they just that these demons have taken over. You might look at them and then they might just appear to be crazy. You, but no, no, real demons. So this was this particular type of man, who a certain man who had these devils a long time. This man, see, these demons will make you do things that are normal human behavior you wouldn't do. This man was walking around naked. You know, they mutilate, cut themselves. You know, they do all kind of things when they're filled with demons. And this stuff is real. It's but go ahead. He says, this man wear no clothes, neither abide in any house, but he, he slept in tombs or in graveyards. Go ahead. 29. Mm -hmm. For he had commanded. Oh, uh, this is the point. When Jesus saw the man, the man cried out with his voice. All right? Verse 28. The man cried out in his voice, but it wasn't the man speaking. It was the demons that were inside of him speaking through his mouth. And what did they say to him when they saw Jesus? The man, the man coming out of the man's loud voice. It says, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, the son of God most high? I beg thee, torment me not. Because when they saw, when them demons uh, saw Jesus walk, come on the set inside of this man, 
You know, they beg them not to torment. See, these are real demons. Right? Why would they beg Jesus not to torment them? Right? Now we're dealing with his minions. See, Satan's minions are, you know, they were all cast down in chains of darkness. You don't see them. They exist. And they are real. Keep reading. So, uh-huh. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. He had, he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had called. And he was kept bound in chains and in feathers. And he broke the bands and was driven of the devils into the wilderness. Uh-huh. And Jesus asked him, saying, what is thy name? Uh huh. And he said, Legion. Uh huh. And many devils were entering into him. Uh huh. And then he saw him that he would not, and, and then he saw him that he would not command him to go out into the deep. You hear that? He said, Jesus asked this demon, What is thy name? And the demon said, Legion, because there were many of us that are more than him. This man didn't have, he had many. And when he said many, it ain't no top. That's right. Mm -hmm. So he said, Legion. That's my name. I don't have one name because there's many of us. All right? He said, and they saw him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. They basically begged him to not, when you take us out of him, because we know you're getting ready to, you know, drive, drive us out. You know, they're begging him to not make them go out into the deep. Go ahead. Turn two. Uh-huh. And there was the herd of many swine. Feeding on the mountain. Uh-huh. And they be saw that he was suffering to empty the tomb. That's he right. Uh-huh. Then with the devils out of the man and emptied into the swine. So these devils, the Lord drill drove these devils or these demons out of this man, and they entered into the into the into the swine. Uh-huh. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into yeah. the lake and were choked. And were choked. So basically he put these demons, they drove them into the swine, and the swine went mad and rolled and went down into the Ran down into the lake and they all drowned. Go ahead. When they fed them, when, when they did fed them, saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Uh huh. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. That's right. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. You hear that? So this man had been mm -hmm. troubled by battling and demons for years. And then the Lord came to draw these demons out. And this man was sitting here in his right mind. You know, in his right mind. And the people that came and saw this, they became afraid. Go ahead. They also who saw it told them, by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. So now they want to know by what means was this possessed, uh, was this possessed man healed. Because this man's been dealing with this for years. Ain't nobody ever been able to get this, you know, driving demons out of him. Go ahead. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about this round about besought him to depart from it. Uh -huh. And they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Uh -huh. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away and said, Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. That's right. So the man wanted to follow Jesus after that point. Jesus said, No, you know. I got enough. You go ahead and you just go home and you, you preach this and you teach this and you, 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 you proclaim this about how great things God has done for you. Right. That's what he told me. Right. All right. Uh, finish that. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. That's right. Because Jesus didn't find himself, didn't uh, uh, find the robbery to call himself God. That's why he said, Jesus told him, go and show all the great things God has, has done. Jesus just broke the name. Right. 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 And so the man went out and said, hey, when he told everybody all the great things Jesus had done for him. Right. Yeah. That's right. Let's keep moving. Let's go over to uh, Matthew, the uh, 16th chapter. Matthew 16. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Yeah. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Matthew 16 and verse 13. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I the son of man am? Uh -huh. So Jesus asked his disciples when he when he got to Caesarea, you know, hey, you know, whom do men say that I the son of man am? Uh huh. And they said, Some said that thou art John the Baptist, mm -hmm. some Elias, and others Jeremiah's one of the prophets. So. Uh, basically, they were saying that 
that some say that you come in the spirit of. That's what they were really mean. You some say you come in the spirit of, of, of uh, John the Baptist. Some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Go ahead. He said unto them, "But whom say ye that I am? But whom do you say that I am?" Go ahead. And Simon Peter answered and said, mm -hmm. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. God. He said, he said, Peter said, What thou art the Christ, right. the Son of the Living God. Because see, there's a difference. Yeah, Jesus was compared to, to these prophets, and they thought maybe he was coming in the spirit of the prophets, but Jesus wanted to make sure that they understood who he really was. Because right. see, understand, I'm not just the prophet, I am the master prophet. Okay, I'm the one who said, John uh Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, and all the other prophets. All right? But who do you say I am? And Peter answered it correctly. You are the Christ. You are the anointed one. And you are the son of the living God. And that is it. That's it. That's all. Go ahead and run. 17. Uh-huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjon. Uh-huh. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. With my father, which is heaven. He said, man, but blessed are you, uh, Peter. He said, because I know flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. The only way you got this revealed to you is by my father. That's it. That's how I know you're blessed. Because I, you know, no flesh, no man has revealed this to you. Peter said this out of his mouth with conviction. Peter understood, now this is not just the father. This is, you know, the son of the living God. Keep reading. Uh -huh. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. And that is, this one scripture is the basis for the Catholic religion. Amen. That one scripture. That's all they got. Nothing else in their doctrine pertains to this book at all. That one verse. He says, and because they believe that Peter was the first pope, as they say. He said, and upon this rock, he said, I build, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Go ahead and read. Verse 18. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, verse 19. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee the kings of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Uh -huh. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose. Uh huh. They had charged him, his disciples, and they should tell no man that he was Jesus Christ. That's right. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things for the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So he writes, it said, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how these things were going to happen. How they were going to go. He started teaching them this because this was going to happen. And that how he would have to deal with suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and the Pharisees, that he was going to have all these problems. And then he would be killed and raised again on the third day. He was teaching that to him. Verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Lord, this should not be unto thee. And you hear that? Peter was like, No, Lord, no, no. Lord, be that far away from thee. You're not going to get killed. Basically, we're not going to let that happen. You're not gonna get killed, you know. Uh, 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 but what? See what the how the Lord? He said, "This shall not be unto thee." And see what the Lord said unto Peter. But he turned and said unto Peter, unto Peter "Get thee behind me, Satan! Get thee behind me, Satan! Uh huh. Thou art an offense unto me. You are an offense to me. Thou savorest not things that be of God, those that be of me, but those that be of men. Because that was none other." And Satan talking to him loud to Peter because he had just said to him, told him that Peter had just told him, hey, you are the son of the living God. All right? Thou art the Christ. All right? And then he, uh, Peter, but when the, he told him, when the Lord told Peter, hey, I'm going to throw the disciples, I, I'm going to get be killed and I'm going to be raised on the third day. Right? You know, all right? And then you tell me that's not going to happen. Because there can't be anybody but you guys. Because you are an offense and it is a lie. And I said, this is what's going to happen, so get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to Satan. But Satan was talking through Peter. See? But see, you have to be able to spiritually discern when Satan's talking through a man and when God is talking through a man. You know what I mean? Keep reading. Yeah. What verse did you leave off at? Yeah, verse 25. About yeah. verse, yeah, verse 24. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's go now over to Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 
Matthew 3 and verse 13. When you get there, go ahead and read. Then come up Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and to John and baptized him. Uh -huh. But John forbade him. But John forbade him, saying, mm -hmm. I have need to be baptized with thee, and come and stop with me. And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it become of us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh -huh. Then he suffered. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Uh -huh. And lo, the voice of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's go now into Matthew chapter 4 and pick it up at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh -huh. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards a hunger. And when the tempter came, Another one of his names, right. Tempter. And when uh -huh. the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Uh -huh. So the Lord uh, just finished fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. After that, of course, he was very weak. Right. So now he was sent into, as it said, he was sent right. into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Right. All right? Who sent him in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? His father. Okay, he was he did not, you know, this all that, did, but there's a reason why. Keep reading, verse four. Uh huh. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeded out of the mouth of God. You see how the Jesus dealt with, with the with the enemy. That's why you have to put on the whole armor. That's why he said, Oh, you, you got all the you gotta have faith, you gotta have righteousness, you got all those things, but most important. You got to have this word, this sword of the spirit, because that is how you are going to battle against Satan. That is the only way to battle against this spirit. He is more powerful than you. He will destroy you. And if you do not have this. So he says, what did Jesus do? Jesus instead, when the devil said, if you, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread. And Jesus said, man, Jesus just read scripture to him. That don't have anything to do with anything. It's written that I shall not live by bread alone. I'm starving right now, but I will not live by bread alone. That is what's written. That's what Jesus gave him, scripture, the spirit. He said that, but I will not live by bread alone, but by every word that will be proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that is the same thing that's going to destroy Satan in the end, because he says he's going to destroy Satan with, the, with, with, with his brightness and not the spirit of his mouth. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's going to destroy Satan with the word of God. That's how he's going to destroy him. But go ahead, verse 5. Uh -huh. Then the devil will take him up into a holy city. Uh -huh. and set up him on the pinnacle of the temple. That's right. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Uh -huh. Any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. That's right. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, mm -hmm. I shall not tempt the Lord by God. Again, the devil take him from up into an exceeding high mountain and show up from all the kingdoms <laughs> of the world and, uh -huh. up and say unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. This is what the devil is telling Jesus, saying, I give you all this if you just bow down, fall down, and worship me. Everything that the devil came to Jesus with, he hit him with the, with the word of God and with scripture. That is what he hit him with. And he hit him with quick, precise points. Because he, just like he told him, when he says, you know, uh, uh, you know, thou shall not, it is written again, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. He says, and he then the Satan told I give you all this. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, uh, what did Jesus say? Then said Jesus unto him. Get thee hence, Satan. Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. That's all book. That's right. Amen. All scripture. That's how Jesus dealt with that. That's right. All right? And so after that, what did the devil do? Then what? the devil leave of him, and behold, angels came and ministered. Him. That's Amen. right. Amen. The God of the Spirit, uh, uh, angels came and they, and they helped him, in other words, because he was weak. But that is what how the Lord dealt with it, and that is why that is part of that armor, that word. Let's go uh, now into uh, let's go into Job, the first chapter. See, just so we can confirm to those who still want to believe that since Satan has been cast out of heaven and has not returned, 
that he is on this earth. Satan roams this earth. That's what he does. Job 1, I'm sorry, Job the first chapter and the first verse. When you get there, go ahead and read. There was a man in the land of Uz. Uh -huh. His name was Job. Uh -huh. The man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and the shoe of evil. That's right. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke oxen and five hundred she asses in a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one of the day. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. That's right. And it was so in the days of their feasting were both were going about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Mm -hmm. But Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed their God and, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continue. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. Now, read, now, check this out. It says, Now there was a particular day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. All right? Now, uh, this is not in heaven. All right? See, this is what that, that where some mistakes and will think tell you that well, Satan is in heaven because they think that when the book says there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also, they're saying that Satan has to be in heaven because they don't understand that this is on the earth right now. This is not happening in heaven when these sons of God, who are none other than angels, because that's another name for angels. Sons of God, just like the Lord say, you will be a, that, that you are, uh, are, you know, you are the sons of God, but you don't yet know what you will become. Well, that's because He's saying that you are flesh and blood now, and you're a son of God. You don't know what you will become because you will take on a new body. You will be like the angels, but the angels are servants as well. The angels tell you all the time, "Don't bow down and worship me. I am a fellow servant. I'm just not made of the same stuff." That's all. Angels are servants. So these sons of God, who in this case are the are angels or spirits, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also, the book says, right? It says, Satan came also. Uh, keep reading. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, You go into and fro the earth. You hear that? And walking up and down there. Satan told you himself. <laughs> He said, he goes, hey, well, you know, basically where you come, where, 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 where did you come from? He said, hey, from going to and fro on the earth and up and down in it. You know how I do, in other words. I'm all up, I'm, I'm, I'm causing tear all over the place. That's what I do. But the point is, is he's on this earth. Keep reading. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, is thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and sure of you? Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job and God be not? You hear that? So the, so the, uh, the Lord said to, to, to say, You know what? You're you not you after my, my, my perfect servant Job, you know, who's upright, who fears me. And Satan answered, Well, don't he just fear He don't fear you for nothing. He don't, he don't fear you for nothing. Uh, don't, don't Job fear God for nothing? No. Verse 10. Has not thou made an edge about him? Haven't you, made him uh, haven't you made a hedge around him? Haven't you protected him? Haven't you given him great substance? All those things, yeah. Take all that away, in other words, you know, and see if he, uh, uh, how, you know, how faithful he is then. This is Satan. This is how Satan is talking now. Go ahead. Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house? But all that he had on every side. Mm -hmm. And thou hast blessed the work of his hands, mm -hmm. and his substance is increased in the land. Mm -hmm. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee with thy face. So, that's just, so the basic thing said, hey, you take all that away from him, take this head from him, I bet you he'll curse you to your face. Go ahead. But Job did not do that. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, You know, all that he had is in thy, is in thy power. Mm -hmm. Only upon himself could not forth thy hand. 
So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So you hear that? And we're not going to get into that story because most know the, 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 know that story. But basically, it's, it, it, you know, the Lord gave the devil the authority, the permission to test his faithful servant, Job. He didn't have to let that out. He gave the devil. The devil didn't just do it. He gave him permission. That's why I'm telling you, Satan does not control anything but what he controls. And he's given that power by the most high. That's it. He gave him the power. He gave him the authority and the permission because he knew Job was a faithful servant. And if, and this right here is a, is a lesson, a, a, a more moral lesson. Because Job, no matter what, when Job did lose everything, Job did get to a point. Yes, he did. It was almost a breaking point. All right? However, Job remained faithful in the end. And that is why you got to, in order to stand against the wise of the devil, you got to put on that whole armor. You know? Your money's not going to protect you from, from the enemy. You know? All right, let's keep moving. Let's go now over to, uh, we're going to move a little faster. Let's go over to Matthew, the 12th chapter. Matthew 12, got about four more. I bet four or five more for that. Mark, uh, Matthew 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 22. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Then was brought unto him one possessed, one possessed with the devil, the blind and dumb. Uh -huh. And he healed him. And so much that the blind and dumb most faith and saw. Uh -huh. And all the people were amazed and said, It's not this the son of David. But when the Pharisees heard him, they said, This fellow does not cast out the devil, but or by else for the prince of the devil. You hear that? So the, the Lord is doing what he does, just like he cast the demons out of the, the man who, who, who was filled with demons for years. The Lord was walking around healing everybody, doing it. I mean, they, it ain't even a record of how much of this he was. Okay, he made blind people see, he made deaf people hear, he did miracles that anybody who at that time knew that this man had to be of God. Period. Even the even the 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 the, the, the Pharisees and all them knew that. They didn't want to deal with it, but they knew it. All right. So he says that you know, ain't this man the son of David? Is not this the son of David? Uh, uh, when the Pharisees heard this, they basically said he's not casting out. Devils, but by the devil, by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. That's who you casting out devils in. Basically calling Jesus a devil. Isn't that something? He 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 cast out devils. You call him saying that he's casting them out by the devil. How do you do that? Go ahead. 25. <laughs> uh-huh. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, uh -huh. every kingdom divided against itself, against itself, is brought to desolation. Uh-huh. And every city or house divided against itself. Shall not stand. That's right. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. If Satan cast, if I'm Satan, I'm cast not Satan, I'm divided against myself. How can I stand? Go ahead. How shall then this kingdom stand? How can it stand? How can Satan's kingdom stand? Right. If, if, if that's what it is. Go ahead. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they should be your judges. Mm -hmm. For if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Mm -hmm. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first found a strong man, and then the wills, and then he will, he will spoil his house. And then he will spoil his house. So basically he said, but if I cast out devil by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Right. And that's what this says. That's how he dealt with it. I'm not going to deal with the, 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 with the, the statement that you made because it doesn't even make sense. Right. But let me tell you, if I am casting out devils by the Spirit of God, then you know the kingdom of God is quite not, is what he's saying. Let's go now over to uh, 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 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. 1 Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Up at verse 8, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. When you get that, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists, whom resists steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplishing the brethren that are in the world. You hear that? Be sober, be vigilant. He's not talking about alcohol. 
He's, he's not talking about he being sober, sober in this sense is talking about spiritually sober. Being able to spiritually discern the wiles of death, the things that are going on. Because your adversary, who I just said, Satan, the enemy of man, your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. And he is. That's hard for people to believe because they don't understand how the devil operates, who he is, what he does. If you did know, you know he's like a roaring lion. What? Waiting to, to, to devour you. You know, keep reading. Verse 10. Uh huh. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle. See? Uh huh. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh huh. All Amen. right, let's go now. Now, let, let's go now over to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I'll pick it up at verse one. Again, in, in first Peter, he was just telling you how, how to prepare, be prepared for the devil, for your adversary, the devil, putting on that whole armor. Again. Basically, Peter explains who the real enemy is and where he is. We are in Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians four, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. When you get there, go ahead and read. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, uh -huh. as we have received mercy, we faint not. That's right. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, mm -hmm. not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's right. For the power of God will be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost, uh -huh. and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them. Not, That's right. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Should shine unto them. Shine. And he says, so, but if our gospel be here, but it is only here, it said, in whom God of this world hath blinded. That is how they, they, they're here to them that are lost. Right. In whom the God of this world hath blinded. That's a lowercase g. In, in whom the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? None other than Satan. He is the prince of this world. And who has blinded these people so that they don't hear the gospel? Who has blinded these people so that they are lost? Saints. He's trying to take your salvation because he knows his plight. Let's move on. Let's go now to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 1. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. When you get that, go ahead and read it. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. This is how you fight against the devil. Go ahead. Who in presence and based among you would be absent and bold toward you. Uh-huh. But, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. That's right. Or if I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Uh-huh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. See? The same thing about not you know you're not your battle you're not wrestling against flesh and blood because right. he says you know even though we walk in the flesh we know our war is not after the flesh or not with the flesh right. we understand that that is what spiritually discerned people are able to do is understand who their enemy is and who they're battling what battle they're in all these things are important to winning a battle or fighting a battle for that right. That's right. you know uh, keep reading four. The weapons of our warfare uh -huh. are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every weapon, just like we were reading about that armor, that we weren't talking about physical armor. All that, all those weapons of, of warfare, they're not carnal. You know, they, these are all spiritual weapons. Right. Every last one of them: righteousness, faith, the Word of God. All these are spiritual weapons. Go ahead and read. Five, verse five. Casting down imaginations in every in every high thing that exalted itself is against the knowledge of God. See, that's what the word of God does. That is when the word of God will cast down imaginations. Because see, what you have is a lot of people, a lot of imagination. But the word of God uh cast down that in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. When you're dealing with the book, I don't care how fairy tale somebody is, it will it will it will cut that down. I don't care what philosophy a man comes up with. The word of God will cut it down. Right. It is a double-edged sword. That's right. That's 
And that's what they're saying. Read the rest of that and we'll keep moving. And bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. You hear that? You bring that into captivity. You know, every thought to how to be obedient into Christ. Let's go now into 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 2 Corinthians, I mean, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. When you get there, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Pick it up at verse 9. Pick it up at verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. When you get there, go ahead and read. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them to love. Uh huh. But God revealed them unto us by his spirit. By his word, word. Uh -huh. for the spirit searching all things, yea, the deep things of God. For the word search of all things, That's right. yeah, the deep things of God. Uh huh. For one man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Uh huh. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. No man knows who God mm -hmm. is. But that, but, 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 that's right. But but by the spirit of God. Uh huh. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world, uh -huh. but the spirit which is of God. Mm -hmm. And we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That's right. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. That's right. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Absolutely. In spirit, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. That's right. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. Not the natural man. Uh huh. But they are foolishness. Because they're him. foolishness unto him when you when you tell us to a natural man. Uh huh. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because they are spiritually discerned. That is how he cannot know. Neither can he know them because it requires spiritual discernment to understand the word of God. And not only to the word of God, but to understand the, 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 the enemy of Satan. you got to be able to spiritually discern. And that is what that's telling us right there, right now. Let's go now over to, uh, uh, let's go to John. The eighth chapter. John 8. We got two more after that. John 8. John the eighth chapter. And we are going to pick it up at verse 30. John 8 and verse 30. When you get there, go ahead and read. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Uh -huh. If he continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Jesus told them, hey, are you, if, if you continue in my work, then you are my disciples indeed. Right. Okay, you got to continue in this work. Right? First of all, you're a disciple now, but if you don't continue in my word, then you're not my disciples. Right? Go ahead and read. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is what he's talking about. Go ahead. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. I say it's out, you shall be made free. You hear that? These people did not even know what Jesus was saying. He, did, he says, you shall know the truth. If you are my disciples indeed, you will continue in my word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They're thinking about some type of physical one. This is where their minds were. And so not only did they were thinking uh, completely wrong, uh, uh, didn't understand what he was saying in regards to the truth and the truth making you free, but they also had the nerve to be arrogant about being Abraham's seed. So they threw in his face, we're Abraham's seed and we ain't never been in bondage to any man. So how are you going to say that that's, you, you shall make us free? Go ahead and read. 34. Uh -huh. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. That's right. And the servant abideth not in the house of heaven, but the son abideth in heaven. That's right. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That's right. I mm -hmm. know that you are Abraham's seed. But you seek to kill me because my word from the place of you. hear what Jesus told him? He said, it don't matter. He said, basically, if you are a committed sin, you're a servant of sin. And we already know that the servant does not abide forever. And you know, in the house, rather, but the son does. That's right. See, I'm, I've been, it's all been given to me. So you, if I say you're free, you're going to be free in me. Right. Go ahead. He right. says, and I know that you are Abraham's seed. Who do you think you're talking to? Right. I know you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. Right. All right? They have no place. And keep that in mind. Keep reading. 
I speak that which I have seen with my father, uh -huh. and ye do that which you've seen with your father. He says, see, I speak those things which I have seen with my father, and you all do the things that you have seen of your father. Right. And we're going to find out who he's talking about, not Abraham. Let's keep reading. Right. They answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. Abraham is our father. Jesus said, Jesus said unto them, if you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. See, if that was your, if you was really seeking, you do Abraham's works. Right. But you don't. Go ahead. But now we seek to kill you. The man that had told you the truth. The man that had told you the truth, right. you want to kill him. Uh-huh. Which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. And Abraham didn't, didn't, didn't Abraham didn't even do this. Keep reading. You do the deeds of your father. You right, you do the deeds of your father. Uh -huh. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We are one father, even God. That's right. Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. If God was your father, you would love him. If God was your father, you would love me. That was the whole thing. They call themselves believing in the father, but don't, don't want to believe in the one that was later became known as the son. It right. don't work that way. And there are people out here to this day that believe that all they got to do is pray straight to the father. Right. Uh -huh. right. Father doesn't hear you. You got to deal with his son. You got to kiss the son, as the book says. That's right. Embrace him That's right. because he's your ticket. Other than that, you know, it's nothing happened. So what Jesus is telling them the truth right here. Keep reading. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Mm -hmm. He even came out of myself when he sent me. That's why, right. Why do you not understand my speech? Mm -hmm. Even because you did not hear my word. Uh -huh. Ye are your father. Y'all see, that's who your father is. That's what he was telling you. That's who your father is. Right. So you do all the things that you see in your father. Right. I do all the things. I see all the things I, I, I speak of. I, I see I see my father. You do all the things that you see of your father. He said, your father is the devil. And what? And the lust of your father you will do. And the lust of your father you will do. Uh huh. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning, talking about the devil. And, the not in the truth. and he did not abide in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, mm -hmm. he speaketh of his own. Uh -huh. He is a liar and the father of that's what That's another name for him. He's a liar and the father of That's Satan. There's no truth in him. He's full of wisdom. But all that wisdom, uh, he was corrupted by his, by his own wisdom. So there's no truth in him. Right. Right. You know? And this is what this is the but the most important thing here is that they uh that is that uh they thought that he was talking about Abraham. They thought, but no, nah, he hit him with the women. If you were Abraham's seed, you do the works of Abraham. But no, you are the seeds of your real father, the devil. Because that's those are the works you do. The works of the devil. Uh let's keep moving. Let's go now to uh Colossians 1. Colossians, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Colossians 1, verse 12. When you get there, read, because Jesus created all things, including Satan. Colossians 1, pick it up at verse 12. When you get there, go ahead and read. Give me thanks unto the Father. Which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, mm -hmm. who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have transformed us into the kingdom of the dear Son. That's right. And whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. That's right. For by Him are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Mm -hmm. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Uh -huh. For it pleased the Father that in him should all things dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. That's right. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind are wicked works, yet now have you reconciled. That's right. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and, un and unreprovable in his sight. Uh -huh. If he continue in the faith, grounded and settled, 
and not be moved, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which he had heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Well, I, Paul, and made a ministry. Well, well, I, Paul, and made a ministry. So he said, Paul said, if you continue in this faith, grounded and settled. Right. See, these are all part of, this is all part of the arm. Right. See, you know, we, you got to be grounded and settled. You, you have to be girded with truth. Right. You know, you have to uh, have faith. You got to walk in righteousness. You have to uh, uh, shout with the gospel, but walk in, in the gospel of peace. But most importantly, carry the sword of the spirit, right? And battle with the sword of the spirit. Right. We got one more place, and that's it. We're going over to John. John, the 17th chapter, and we are going to pick it up at verse 1. John 1. I mean John 17 and verse 1. When you get there, go ahead. These words take Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven. Uh -huh. and Father, the hour is coming. Glorify thy son, that thy son also can glorify thee. Uh -huh. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou given him. Mm -hmm. This is life eternal, and this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. I have glorified thee in the earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. Uh -huh. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. Lord, which I have before the world was. Mm -hmm. I've manifested thy name as the man which thou gave me out of the world. Mm -hmm. Now they were, and thou gave us the beat. See, they have kept thy work. See, and, and like the, this, this is a, the, the Father draws you to Jesus. That's right. And then it's the Father that gives you to Jesus. That's why Jesus said that all that you have given me, Father, I have lost none. Right. I, because uh, if, if the Father gives you to Jesus, then you did, he's not, you will not be lost unless you choose to be lost. So Jesus said, I've lost none. Go ahead, then, son. Uh -huh. Now they have known that all things was the word that I was given to are of you. That's right. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave to me. See, that's what all Jesus did. Right. Gave the words which the Father had given him. Uh -huh. And they have received them and have known surely that I came and have known surely that I came out from them. And they have believed that thou be descending. That's right. I pray for them. I pray for, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. You hear that? Jesus but, said, I pray for them. Right. I don't pray for the world. Right. And keep, keep that in mind. You know, Jesus said, I don't pray for them. Right. Or I pray for those that love me. Or I love those who keep my commandments. Or if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. You know, this is not no, you know, I'm praying for the world. Right. Jesus told you this out of his own mouth. I pray for those that that that, that believe in you. Right. Right? Not praying for the world. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me, uh -huh. for they are thine. That's right. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. That's right. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, O Father. Keep in thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Uh -huh. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Mm -hmm. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, mm -hmm. and none of them is lost. That's right. The son of perdition, that the, script, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He says, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He said, I have kept, and none of them is lost. He says, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Right. So that son of perdition, or that man of sin, has to be revealed. It has to be fulfilled. That thing has to be fulfilled. Go ahead. Verse 13. 13. Uh -huh. And now come out to thee, and these things are speaking the world. They might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Mm -hmm. I have given them thy word. That's right. And the world has hated them. That's right. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Uh -huh. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, yeah. but thou shouldst keep them from the evil. That's right. Just But thou should just protect them from the evil. That's all I uh, pray. Not that you take them out of the world, right. Father. Go ahead. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Uh -huh. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Sanctify them. Separate them, put them aside through thy truth. Thy word is true. I pray in Jesus' name that you got some understanding. Amen. Grace and peace to all brothers and sisters here at the house today. If this is your first visit, we 